And we want to welcome you to the Friday edition of Baseball Today. It's Ploof and Rose getting you all set for your baseball weekend, where I'm sure there will be monumental signings and massive trades and everything else. Or or maybe there won't be. We'll see. Ploofy, how you doing, man? It's Friday, baby. You know I love the weekend. I love the week, too. I think I'm just happy every day, especially when I get to start my day with you. Uh, but I'm excited. It's a beautiful day outside. There are some, a lot of good things to talk about. Even now we don't even need other stuff to happen. Let's just pump the brakes a little bit. We got, we got five topics, I believe today. Yes, we do. Just about every every day day here on baseball today. Yes, that's how we roll, but we want to welcome everybody that's joining us live on YouTube. Once again, that's kind of a new thing for us. that we started this week. Uh, We're going to continue to grow that. So tell your friends, have them line up at the door. You get great seats each and every day, and hopefully you get entertained and informed along the way. Uh, Just a little special personal note. Congratulations to my wife, Michelle Rose, who passed her real estate exam yesterday. Nice. Congratulations, Michelle. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really, really good. It's really, really good. So uh, very cool. And um, we have a new baseball team. I mean, we do. it's official. The Cleveland Guardians started selling their merchandise uh, at 9 a.m. Eastern today at their team store. So go get yourself some Guardians gear if you're into that sort of thing. Did Hopefully you see what happened? Right. Yeah. An ominous sign. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. Like, look, I get it. It's just an accident, most likely. But to most have, likely. Well, it might have been something else. I don't know. But to have your new team logo fall off the wall of your stadium on the day that your team store starts selling the gear is a little weird. I'm just happy. I wouldn't we like it if to... I was a Guardians fan. Stop. We're going to be just fine. Uh, I'm just happy that we didn't have to arm wrestle a, a roller derby team for the name. So That was genius by that roller derby team. There, there was some cash exchange somewhere, right? I mean, we're just assuming that. I know nothing. <laughs> Good for that. Gosh, all I could tell you is I didn't have to dip into the Rose piggy bank. Uh, okay. to, to tell big piggy bank, so, that thing's like the squid well. piggy bank. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't getting there. All right, uh, speaking of a guy who cashed in yesterday for the second time in his uh, outstanding career, 29 year old Bryce Harper is the National League MVP. He, um, he bested Fernando Tatis and Juan Soto to win the award. He is now the fifth different player to win it with multiple teams. So in your opinion, has Bryce Harper to this point of his career surpassed your expectations for him when he was the number one overall pick? A hundred percent. Surpassed is a great word. Like that's beyond expectations. Two MVPs. I mean, the draft is, is so it's such a crapshoot. Essentially it's a gamble. Even with these first overall picks, even with all the first rounders, the, the chances of, somebody having you know an average big league career is still pretty slim but to do what he's been able to do is incredible you just said the two mvps what's funny about bryce is is he's one of those guys like i could name like the junior college he went to i know that he was like a catcher in high school i know so many things about him because the eyeballs have been on him since he was 14 years old and to have that kind of pressure on you as you make your way through professional baseball, through the minor leagues, into the big leagues, into free agency like he did, he's had the spotlight on him the entire time. And sometimes people have just written him off because, you know, he didn't have a one dot OPS. It's like the expectations are so high for Bryce every single year. And he's just lived up to it. Career 916 OPS. He's already amassed over 40 war like the guy is on a Hall of Fame track, obviously, and I, I, I really enjoy watching it because he works hard. And every single person I've ever talked to that's played with him says the same thing. Mm-hmm. Bet you didn't know this. I was a teammate of his, Rosie, for like in Philadelphia three weeks in spring training. Or bro, we have that bond, Bryce and I. And I did see him work his butt off, and I'm just happy for the guy. I really am. So you have to look at this kind of um, macro here, big picture. In our in our lifetime, how many guys have come in with the can't miss sticker in any sport? In baseball, it's probably junior. In uh, there's nobody in football. 
I'm sorry. Like guys have been expected to turn franchises around. It just, it's really hard yeah. in golf. It's tiger woods mission accomplished in basketball. It's LeBron James mission accomplished. And I'm not saying that Bryce Harper is LeBron James or Tiger Woods, but there are guys whose names we knew at age 15. It's not a and bad comparison, Rosie. It's not. No, it's not. And and people will get on Bryce because they say, well, look, the year after he left Washington, what'd they do? They won it all. Listen, Washington is in no place whatsoever to win that World Series title in 2019 if Bryce Harper hadn't helped lift them to where they got. Because he made baseball in Washington sexy. You think Max Scherzer is signing there if Bryce Harper didn't do what he did? There's no way. No way in the world. So even though he wasn't technically a part of that team, he was a huge building block for that franchise. Yes. I agree. No, the guy's the guy's been incredible. And like I said, like j go back and look at the list of number 1 overall picks. There's going to be some pretty good players there. Mm -hmm. But overall, if you're taking percentages, I mean, it's slim. And to be able to do it, like I said, with the eyeballs on you since 14 years old, that's a joke. Yep. So congrats, Great. Bryce. So the the uh, the modern era draft has been going on since 1965 when Rick Monday was selected first overall. How many number one overall picks do you think have won an MVP? I think it's him. I think it's A-Rod. And I think that maybe that's it. Did somebody else no, sneak six. in there? There's yeah, six, there's six okay. total. So he and A-Rod are the only ones to have done it multiple times. Okay. Junior did it. Yeah. Chipper Jones did it. Sure. Jeff Burroughs did it. Josh Hamilton did it. Some pretty that's big it. names. Yeah, that is, that's it. So just to win an MVP, let alone to win two, and with different franchises, and I think that he's going to lead Philadelphia to the playoffs at some point. Are they going to win a World Series? I mean, heck, they've only won a couple in their – the history of the franchise, which has been around more than a hundred years. So if he doesn't get it done, oh, well, get in line on that one. You know, Mike Schmidt was a three-time NL MVP. He won one ring. You're you going to take shots at him? I mean, no. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, to, and people say this and sometimes you gloss over it, but the, when he's doing it also, I think this is one of the tougher times in the history of baseball to play baseball, like with, with, cell phones and social media there's just a lot of added pressure that comes with it like back in you know say you're playing in the 80s or early 90s like you played in the game there was sports center and that's about it like now it's constant the attention and like you know there's just a lot of added stuff that he has to go through that maybe some of the other guys didn't and he's still thriving yep. you never hear a bad word about about him either which is which is cool by the way i forgot one joe mauer Seven. That's right. I can't believe I forgot that. 2009. Yeah. Shame on me. Shame on me, Joe Mauer. Shame, shame on both of us. Shame on this show. By the way, there's only been three number one overall picks that have made the Hall of Fame. That's the number that you should be. Now, that might change. You know, that might change in, in the future over the next, you know, 10 years or so. But only Chipper, Griffey, and Harold Baines they had to wait a long time to get in. Number First one overall pick. 2004 go 2000 you should know this one it's kind of like a a fun fact bar trivia answer that's not like matt bush is it yes way to go Ooh. rosie that's pretty good Ooh. okay all right see you, yeah. you better be careful if you want to play trivia time with uh with uh, papa rose you've been around for a long time you've seen some things man ah uh, stop all right let's move on <laughs> Uh, as expected, Shohei Otani named the AL MVP. It was unanimous. Once again, big picture here. Do you think that his success will kind of open the door for two-way players? I'm sort of uniquely positioned to answer this. I'm going to have to talk about myself a little bit. Okay, <laughs> I know people. some people like that. Most people hate it. So, But just bear with me here. To answer your question, yes, I think it does open the door a little bit. But, like, we're not – this isn't some regular dude here we're talking about. This is a generational talent. So, for instance, myself, I got drafted in the first round as a shortstop. 
I also had people looking at me as a pitcher. I was really good. In fact, I was a utility player on the USA Today All-American team. I, I firmly believe that if I chose the pitching route, I could have made it to the Big East as a pitcher. And I don't think that's like a stretch and you could talk to scouts, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But me trying to do both would not have worked and, and be successful at both. It wouldn't have worked. It's too hard to do. So like people, there's always two-way players in high school. Like that's just what you do. College, it gets a little less. Like probably there's not many guys that do it in college, but especially right. in pro ball, to go and commit yourself to both sides of the ball like that. And he's not a reliever. He's not going in throwing one inning. He's a starter who hits. It's just not easy. So yeah, you might open the door a little bit, but thinking that we're going to just get a bunch of two-way players now because, oh, Shohei did it. We can Somebody else could do it. That's not the case. It's not going to happen just because it's it's too hard. It's too hard. By the way, we're showing uh, amateur video of you at Crespi going yard and also pitching. Um, here you are. There you go. Glory days. You baby. know this. This was before high def, apparently, and iPhones. <laughs> this is 2004, so. Chris. Okay, this is like <laughs> state of the art stuff back then. Uh, dude. So uh, one of my sons, I think it was Brady, who who saw when this was put out on social media by our team the other day. He comes home. He goes, "Dude, Ploof looked like a man playing with kids." I was like, yeah, really? Dude. I said, that's the way it was. I said, that's your goal. You want to be the Trevor Plouffe of your baseball team. Let's go. Let's go. I, I love that you're showing this. It's boosting the ego a little bit. I was pretty good back then. But I'm just like, yeah. seriously, it's we have to remember that Shohei is a, a generational talent. So, you know, like this isn't going to just happen more and more and more. It's just, That's not the case. It's not. It is not. Even if we want to, you know, who is it? Brendan McKay, who was like the Brandon fourth McKay. overall pick of, of the Rays, and he's struggled to make it in the either area. It just shows you how challenging it is. This guy's a unicorn. He's a shooting star. It's not going to open the doors. Um, it sounds great, but to have actually a guy that can do it at his level is insane. And I, I can only tell you this because with as many major leaguers as I get to talk to on the Rose rotation, and whenever I bring up his name, people are – the guys who are the best in the world at this are amazed at what he's doing. Yes. It takes a lot to impress those guys. When yes. those guys are heaping praise on another player, like Mitch Haniger, we had him on. Go listen to that. It's the latest episode of the Rose Rotation. He has terrible numbers against Shohei, the pitcher. And he's had <laughs> plenty of balls fly over his head when he's been in the outfield. He's like, I've never seen it before. I don't understand it. It's unreal. It's amazing. He said he should be the unanimous MVP, and he ended up being it. Yes. And we should just all be thankful. I could just put out this word of warning, and I will say it every time I talk about Shohei. Don't lose the zest and the flavor that we have for Shohei because you're like, oh, I've seen it. Appreciate it for what it is because we might not ever see it again in the history of this sport. Don't let yourself get Shohei fatigue. Well, that's that's a. I was gonna ask you this question. I'm, gra- I'm glad you brought it up. Our good friend Foolish Baseball last yep. night on Twitter posed that question. Like, he basically was thinking out loud, saying Shohei's backed himself into an impossible corner, where if he doesn't completely repeat what he's done or make or get better, that we might have some of that Otani fatigue. Like we've just mm-hmm. he's he set him his expectations so high, and I don't know if that's true. I think that what he's doing is so unique that I think if the if the voters really just sit down and give it some thought, like this guy could run off like four, five MVPs in a row, and 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 it, and it should happen because what he's doing is just so unique. Now there is going to come to a point where we we might get some Otani fatigue. We've seen it in other sports, like LeBron James doesn't win the MVP every year, and there's there's reason that he probably could have multiple years that he didn't, mm-hmm. but I'm hoping that doesn't happen with Otani because like you said, the best of the best of the best, just don't know how this guy does it. And when you're talking like that, I mean, that's, he's special. So w- real quickly on the fatigue side of things, it's really interesting because I was covering, I had the good fortune of covering Tiger Woods when he was at the top of his game. I followed him around the world when he won the Tiger Slam. And the last leg came at St. Andrews over in Scotland. And I remember Tom Watson, the legendary golfer, coming off the course 
and everybody wanted to talk to him about Tiger. And he said, guys, he said, Tiger Woods is setting the bar so high for himself, not even he will be able to jump over it. He said, just remember that when you guys are criticizing him when he doesn't win every week because it's yeah. going to happen. So the same thing can be equated for Otani. I worry about more about the health than the Shohei fatigue. How long can a human body go out and pitch every six days and DH four or five times a week? I don't know if he can do it. It And we heard the stories this year that he didn't take BP. Okay, the guy still has to prep, still has to be physically ready to go hit 95 with movement. So that's the thing I worry about, and I just, I'm just i going to enjoy the ride as long as I can as a fan. You know, we're spending so much time on Shohei, but I want to point out to people, he had 640 plate appearances this year. I was under the impression that he maybe had like 450, Jeez. but the guy had a legit full season as a hitter and put up a 965 OPS. That is Un elite. And then he was on the mound too. Like, we can't talk enough about this guy. Yep. I'm with you a thousand percent. We had with that being said, players. let's move on. <laughs> we had football players tweeting about him. That's the last point. <clears throat> all right. So uh, we all thought maybe Justin Verlander was going to be headed to the boogie down. <laughs> all signs, all uh, signs were pointed that direction. And what does he do? He re-ups with Houston for a year plus a player option. Could go to a two-year $50 million deal. How surprised were you that uh, JV did not head elsewhere? Um, I guess I'm not. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on. You okay, dude? messed up. What's going dude, on? Somebody partying a little too much on a Thursday? I'm not. I'm feeling great. I'm actually going to go on a run after this. Let me talk about Verlander. Stop interrupting me. It was a cough. Yeah, you're, you are You have the 83-year-old old man cough. I'm not interrupting you. You're like, so Justin Verlander. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to play through it, bro. This is a flu game situation, okay? Look, flu do you game. remember when okay. you... At least we're Be not careful. in the uh, process of... Like, remember at the beginning of COVID, if you cough, like people will look at you like they wanted to kill you. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. hold so all your coughs in. You better be careful. If you're having the flu game, Scottie Pippen's going to motherfuck you in his next book. Let's go. I think Scottie Pippen lives in my neighborhood. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Oh, J Justin Verlander. Were you surprised that he re-signed in Houston? Not really. I don't know. I didn't really have a great landing spot for him. He put out some parameters like where he wanted to go. He wanted that spring training in Florida. He said he wanted to be East Coast. Um, he, I think he wanted to probably be on a winning team. So like this kind of fits the bill besides the East Coast part of it. Uh, I think he got some. Uh, that's a great deal for him. Mm -hmm. 25 and 25 with a chance to opt out. If he goes out and has a great year this year, he's a free agent, gets to, you know, go break the bank again. I think he's comfortable there. They're comfortable with him. What's interesting is they don't really need starting pitching. I guess everybody needs more starting pitching. Oh, but don't say that. Relative to other teams, they are they they have one of the more thorough rotations in baseball yes. right now. They have seven so like, guys that are that are major leaguers. Great on the Astros getting this deal done. Like I think this mm -hmm. is awesome for them. I can't believe. I mean, I'm sure other teams were offering in that range i'd assume if the astros went there uh but i think it's a great spot for them um i misspoke one time well i didn't misspoke i didn't misspeak but i said like this oh, is the end of the astros as we know them because of correa leaving and all that stuff but really their core is still very much intact they're in and their shape. pitching is there like this is a team if you want to talk about the mariners resurgent the angels might do this the rangers blah 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 the Astros are still number one in the West until you prove me otherwise. That's it. Yeah. And Verlander just adds to that. So I was I was mildly surprised. I was. When that tweet came out, I went, oh, wow. Okay, because I thought, I thought maybe in no particular order, I thought Yankees, I thought Braves made serious sense. And I know that he wants to train in Florida. He's got a home down there. I get it. But I thought the Dodgers were an amazing landing spot for him too because obviously they need starting pitching. Also, because Kate can do her thing in L.A. But also, I said this yesterday on Talking Yanks. I think he wants to be the guy at Fox Baseball, whether that means on the desk or in the booth, and gives him a great opportunity to start developing a relationship. We know his brother already works for Fox. 
not to say it can't happen. It just seemed like on an off day, hey, you want to go grab lunch with uh, with Eric Shanks, who's the president of Fox Sports? Go for it, bro. Keep planting that seed. I, I turned him that down that for was... lunch the other day. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. I did. You turned him down for lunch? No, I'm just kidding you. I don't even know. I have no idea who that is. He's the president of Fox Sports. Pretty big player. Okay. Used to be a uh, used to be a producer on the best damn sports show, period. Now right. he's I like him. if you like him, I like him. All right. Shanksy. Interesting guy. He'll always look at you like this. Look at you. Whoa. Stare, stare right That's... through you at the wall. I'm like, do that again? It's just <laughs> it's like Shanks, it's just me. It's Rose. Just just talk to me, bro. <laughs> You're like staring through me. Easy. So uh, that's all. I was surprised. But I think it's a – he's obviously comfortable. Mr. Yeah. Crane hooked him up. He's good to go. All right. Hey, the Mets have a GM. Hey! Congratulations. Billy Epler, who went out to Anaheim and never got Mike Trout to the playoffs in his five-year tenure there. Oh, so, my okay. gosh. Will you – Now that, – that's, well, That hurts. Hey. Do I? I'm just spitting facts here. Facts only on this show. That's it, man. I'm not taking shots at Billy Upler. All I'm saying is that they did not get to the playoffs while he was the GM. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's facts. Okay. It's, it's, it's a shot, like, but it's a fact. That's not a shot. Facts are not shots. I think I think facts could be shots. Not in this case. It's Robbie, true. He didn't I'm weigh in on this. I mean, I, facts are facts. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. If I said this, see you, Rose, you're old. That's a fact. I'm middle aged. That's not a fact. Everything's <laughs> Age relative. Is relative but I'm middle aged. Yeah, exactly. So to somebody, you're old facts. There's nothing relative about Billy Epler not getting his team to the playoffs. That is either did happen or didn't happen. I'm not being mean by bringing that up on his resume. If he was sitting okay. right here and I said, Billy Epler, who did not get to the Angels to the playoffs in his five years as a GM, he can't come back and say, oh, man, that's cold. I'll be like, no, it says it right here on your resume. That's not he being might, mean. He might say that to you. He might, this is what his shoulders will do. And then he'll say, now, he could be, Chris. you could be disappointed in the facts that I'm giving. I don't think, I wish the chat would let us know about that. <laughs> There's people who are like, yeah, man, that is, that's mean. And then there are people saying, <laughs> to me, you true, are old. That's true. That the old thing is that can be debated whether it's fact or night because it's a sliding scale. But <laughs> now they need to find a a manager. Now Epler, uh, you know, one of his mentors was Stick Michael, who of course hired Buck Showalter as then the youngest manager in Yankees history. Um, so there's always a, there's a connection there. Buck has said, "Sure, I'd be up for a job." He's even, you know, looked at the Mets job and said, that one seems interesting. Do the Mets need a guy like Buck Showalter in the dugout? I mean, yeah, Buck is, I think Buck's a, a great fit for the Mets. I think that experience does matter in New York. I think, I think it does. In my, in my head, that makes sense. And, you know, Buck is, Buck is one of the guys who has the experience, but doesn't he still treats the game and, and is learning about the game. When I watch Buck on MLB Network and, and, mm -hmm. and he's talking baseball, I enjoy what he's talking about. He's not like Me a too. back in my day guy. I think he's always willing to learn. And I think mm -hmm. I think if I had to pick a perfect manager, I wouldn't go young, young, no experience. And I wouldn't go old head Tony La Russa type. I think you need somebody that has experience that's also willing to, you know, understand how the game is played now, understand guys' personality. And Buck, every person I ever talked to on the Orioles that played for him, loved him. Players, guy, always had your back. And I think more than anything, a player wants that. A manager that has his back. You can fuck up some decisions during the year. Fine. I'm going to mess up too. But, like, I'm going to have your back and you Better have my back. That's really the only thing that matters to players. Uh, as far as like New York and the, and the Mets and 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 that whole thing, I think he he fits because he's gonna say the right things. He's gonna take accountability uh, with the New York media. He's he under I think he understands how to do that. Obviously, he was already part of it in his early days. 
So I think he's great. I think he's great for it. I don't think he's the only candidate, but if you if they signed him today, I'd be like, I like it. I like Buck Showalter in Queens. Or what is it? Uh, where do they play again? Queens. Flushing. Yes, but it's Queens. I always mess that up. Yeah. I like Buck, to answer your question. How about that? I am a thousand percent behind this. If okay. I were a Mets fan, I would... I would send Billy Epler a letter and I would say, first of all, I'm not concerned that you didn't get the angels to the playoffs in your five years as a GM. Now <laughs> you go hire Buck Walter. <laughs> okay. Go do it yesterday. Make it happen. Listen, Mike, Mike Schilt might be a fine man. I would not bring him in. I just wouldn't. I would go with Buck. I would say you're our guy. If you look at his history, what he has done with franchises, People forget, like, there's a lot of young fans listening to this, and you think that the Yankees have always been great. There was a time from the early 80s until the early 90s where they stunk. Nobody was going to games, even though they had big names, Winfield, Mattingly. They weren't winning games. Buck was hired in 92, a year after the Yankees got the number one overall pick in Brian mm -hmm. Taylor, the number one pick of the draft. He got him turned around quickly, eventually led him to the playoffs in 95, and George booted him to the curb, and then Joe Torre took over, and they went on that great run. He went to Arizona, built that franchise up, got him to the playoffs in year two. Texas Rangers, never got him to the playoffs, but turned him around, made him an 89-win team. Orioles, they hadn't made the playoffs in over a decade, got him to the promised land. I get it, hasn't won it all, but he is a three-time manager of the year award winner. Had it happened in 94, had it happened in 2004, had it happened in 2014, and as manager of the Mets, he's going to win it in 2024. Wow. Mark the tape. Wow. I love it. Thank Can you. I say something about Buck, too? Please. He treats his uniform with respect. A lot of managers these days, they don't treat their uniform with respect. They wear hoodies. They, do, you know, it's all this thing. It's, you know, casual, casual, casual. Buck. Looks good in his union. I even think he wears like, like turf. Sometimes I feel like he wears spikes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen him wear spikes. Is that true? Could I don't know. Thing. We'll have to work on. He's that. got a great walk or run out to the mound to take pictures up. Buck, you're my guy. I love you, Buck. And I'd love to have uh, Buck and Mattingly in the same division too, because the reason that Buck went into coaching and then managing was because he knew he wasn't going to beat out Don Mattingly. With the Yankees. So okay. there we go. All right. Last one. Oh, yeah. That picture of AJ Hinch and Carlos Correa sharing lunch. Does that do anything for you or not a big deal? I don't know what it's supposed to do for me. I mean, I get it. Like people are saying, yeah, there's Carlos is going to go to the Tigers. Hinch is, is swaying him. Carlos is going to do this with about 15 other teams, too. <laughs> and I got to say this about Detroit. You got breakfast? Bro, you need to be getting dinner. Like, don't take this kid out to breakfast. Like, a little brunch. What did he have? Like, a few eggs and some toast? Dude, you need to be getting this guy some steak Big and one. some lobster. Yeah. Like, well, I get, I, I think, where, where was this? Was this in Houston? It was, but Ploof, can we just start with the photo itself? So this is somebody who's holding, they're probably holding their phone somewhat like this. Oh, yeah. Like, inconspicuously, just so they're not like, hey, AJ, Carlos, look over here. Smile on three. Hold on, portrait mode. Like, right, they're they're doing it totally like this so that they're trying not to be seen. Um there's two knocks against Detroit here. One, I heard that there's rumors they don't want to go over 300 million. Knock number okay. one. Number two, you took them to breakfast. Stop. That's a deal breaker for you? Maybe. I love breakfast. I like breakfast too, but the they're, they're, there's, I'm not drinking a $500 bottle of wine on your tab at breakfast. I want to be doing that. You better be taking me to dinner so I can do that. Doesn't the Illich family still, they're just going to send them pizzas. Don't you? Right. Who? There was somebody that so, Garrett Cole, I believe. Garrett Cole signed with the Yankees. And he said one of the things that got him to sign with the Yankees is they got him bottles of wine that he liked because the visiting clubhouse manager told them what mm -hmm. wine he likes. Yeah. So don't tell yeah, me this stuff totally, doesn't matter. 
that should be that should be the decision that sways your life over an, another decade, making sure it's that they know what details. sort of wine. It's yes. details. It's not wine. This is don't don't get caught up in that. It's the detail thing. Like you you want to be swayed. You're in this position to a. First of all, it's all about the money for Carlos Correa. I think almost for certain he's going to go where whoever pays him the most. Okay, and then the number two, like he obviously wants to be somewhere that he can win, and like there's a path. But three, like you want to feel wanted. You you don't want to feel like it's a cold offer where it's like, hey, yeah, we want you, blah blah. Like you want to feel like you're part of the family. So, I, I I'm joking about the breakfast thing. Like obviously him and Hinch have a a, a storied past. So, uh, breakfast can be intimate, I guess. But if I'm the Tigers, I'm not taking him out to breakfast. Maybe they ordered him his favorite type of toast. Maybe that's it. Correa, that's- you know what? I I think I take everything I just said back. Carlos Correa is a different type of person. He might be an alien. Who knows? Maybe maybe that's his favorite thing. All right. Uh, what do you have coming up on John Boy Media? <laughs> Bad enough. I don't. I don't have anything. I got nothing, nothing today. Monday, I'll be back um, with the boys talking baseball. We're doing Monday, Wednesdays. Uh, sequence will be out on Tuesday. Go check out the one I did on Jonathan India that came out this Tuesday. Cool. That's it, man. What do you got? Uh, Mitch Haniger out there still for public consumption. Go watch it. Truth teller. I love that about him. Really honest and a lot of uh, kind of vulnerable areas. I liked it. And then our outstanding producer, whom you heard from earlier, Robbie Shirocco, putting the finishing touches on our free agency fantasy draft. Mm. Yeah, so that's coming out Monday. We've already had a couple of guys swing and miss, mm-hmm. uh, you know, before we even put it out, and that will be so deemed with large sure. X's and buzzer sound effects, <laughs> I'm sure. But it's going to be something fun. It'll be fun, like, for, for the fans to keep score in the offseason about how each of us does. So Love it. Yeah, so that's coming out on Monday, and then we'll be back here on Monday. Monday, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern yes. on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, we have a uh, we have a nice following today. Nice, nice live group. Uh, so go tell your your baseball friends that we're here. We're live on YouTube. It's easier to hit up. We'll be sending out uh, messages and reminders and everything across our social media platforms. And uh, right. hopefully I'll be getting some Guardians gear in the near future. As much as I love my John Boy hat and my Miggy Road shirt. Hey, is Mickey Rojas like the biggest celebrity ever now? Like, what's going on? Yeah, so he just like he courtside. He's got he's a he was a dignitary. Like, what the? Yeah. So actually, that dignitary story was great. Um, they were doing some. What was it, Robbie? Was it some FBI training or Secret Service mm-hmm. training or something in Miami? Yeah, DSS, I believe. Oh, DSS. Okay, so they needed a guy in Miami who was recognizable, but not like a lister so they needed a guy who was famous but not top of the list right not like dan Mm -hmm. marino walking around town sort of deal sure and so they whisked him around and they needed to practice like protecting him and keeping people away so that when the big big names come in town whether it's political or everything else that they were prepared for it that's how they train so he was like all these fans started coming up to him, and wanted to talk to him to the Marlin about the Marlins, and wanted to get his autograph. And he said, he said all these people came in and kind of whisked him away, and he felt That's terribly hilarious. about it. Yes, yeah, no, he did. So. He felt he felt awesome. That's what he felt. And then he also just shot a music video too. Oh my god! Um, yeah, he just put that. You on see what you did for Miggy Rojas? You put you put him up there, baby. Hey, listen, this is what the Rose Rotation does. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what's gonna, you know. Giolito, Glass, now they're all going to blow up. Brault. Yeah. You know, I hope they forget about us. Me. I don't want them to remember us where they started. Screw it. Miggy, don't yeah. think about us. Just go be a king, dude. Go get your thing. Leave, yeah, leave us peasants alone. We spit facts only here on baseball today. Sorry, but sorry, Billy Epler. I feel terribly <laughs> now. My bad. My bad. All he right, thinks listen, about that every day when he wakes up, just so you know. I know he does, but I'm not here to – pick on him i was just disappointed that mike trout has made played three playoff games but that's another diatribe i can go on all right dude have a great weekend tell olivia and the kids i say hi okay all right you too man love you guys faded breath for that love you guys too enjoy your sports weekend we'll see you back here 
Monday edition of Baseball Today, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Thanks, as always, for consuming everything that John Boy Media throws your direction. Peace!